Hi, my name is Anna and I'm the owner of Work and Toad, a co-working and play care space. My name is Dr. Itzkevich and I'm board certified pediatrician uh, and ER pediatrician and running private practice in Forest Hills. Hi, Dr. Mzia. Hi. So, Dr. Mzia, we had um, some parents send in questions through social media about their some fears, some misconceptions uh, about coronavirus uh, and how it pertains to families and children. So I would like to ask you a few questions. Sure. So, um, well, I guess one qu the first question would be, who is at high risk and who is at low risk of uh, being infected or having complications from coronavirus? So the higher risk, I would say, it's the older adults uh, who suffer from some kind of cardiac problem or pulmonary diseases like emphysema, asthma, and also underlying uh, diseases like uh, uh, diabetes, uh, who has decreased immune system, uh, patients with HIV, of course, patients who are under chemotherapy, um, cancer patients, uh, and also children with the same underlying conditions like asthma, diabetes, uh, heart problems, uh, um, immunodeficiencies, uh, cancer, and uh, under the chemotherapy, all these children. And kids who get often sick, are they at high risk or about the same? Uh, good question. If we're talking about a regular cold, mm -hmm. uh, which they get, all children get at least once a month, no, they are not in the higher risk. Okay. It just, I call it as a part of growing up, it's normal. Uh, every child can have a cold once a month, especially if they go to school or daycare. And they are not considered as a higher risk for okay. coronavirus. And for example, if a child does have conditions like asthma, does that put them in the yes. high risk? Yes, asthma and emphysema. Although we don't have a good studies and we don't have too many cases in the children, so I cannot be certain. But I would consider them as a high risk. So, would you advise parents who have kids with those underlying conditions who currently attend daycare or preschool to potentially consider keeping them at home? Um. I would not keep them at home uh, unless we know that someone in this daycare was carrying the, or, or was exposed and unless uh, there is a, mm, a quarantine in school, you don't have to keep them uh, in school. Uh, kids can go to school, just wash hands, uh, use all the precautions, uh, drink lots of fluids, give extra vitamin C with the food like honey, lots of berries, bell pepper. And I think it uh, make sure you take all the prescribed medication, have ready uh, um, with all like emergency medications for asthma patients, mm -hmm. and I think they can attend the school as usual. Right. And one of the questions that was sent in to us actually pertains to boosting the child's immune system, and I'm guessing it's not only pertaining to children but also families as a whole. What are good ways, effective ways to boost immune system? Mm -hmm. So I believe in natural stuff, so I don't like getting uh, all these vitamins uh, like in pill uh, form. I believe with good uh, food, nutrition and lots of vegetables, lots of fluids, lots of berries which has a lot of vitamin C, uh, um, it's good enough to boost your immune system. Great. Dr. Mzia, um, now are infants considered to be in high risk or low risk category? Um, I would say that they are not in higher risk than general population. Mm. We all are in risk, but the risk for children it's not higher than in general population. This is if it's your question. Interesting. Well, what happens if somebody in your family gets sick and if, you know whether it's cold, flu? Right now, I think that uh, makes families more concerned. Should you isolate the family before the results come in? Um, actually, we don't test them for uh, coronavirus. So if someone has this, not regular cold, but high suspicion for coronavirus, I would advise to uh, quarantine the whole family uh, for two weeks until everyone gets uh, uh, you know, healthy. Okay. And then what are those symptoms? Usually it's high fever. Uh, it can reach to one of four and dry cough. Okay. And sometimes it can lead to respiratory distress or shortness of breath, difficulty breathing. This is 
when we have to call 911 mm -hmm. and go to the hospital. And um, follow up, um, at what point, if your child gets sick in daycare, should you go see your pediatrician? So any child who has like fever more than three days and has cold symptoms or has shortness of breath, uh, decreased oral intake, looks sick, uh, looks lethargic, should go to see the pediatrician, uh, regardless of the coronavirus. Right? Understood. And you already answered that question, but just uh, I had a parent send that in uh, pertaining to what happens if uh, a child is sick, should you still adhere to 24-hour fever-free rule before sending them back to daycare, or should you err on the side of caution and keep them at home for the full two weeks? Uh, again, if we have, it's better to consult this pediatrician, and if we have suspicion for coronavirus, then we advise you to uh, um, stay home for two weeks. If it's just regular cold or child test positive for flu, then it's only for 24 hours. So okay. it's always try to consult this pediatrician. You can or call us or you can come in the office. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, so um, one of the questions that many parents have is, what is an effective way to disinfect? Hence, um, right now, as you know, pharmacies run out of everything from face masks to hand sanitizers to even rubbing alcohol. What do you do? How do you keep your kids safe and yourself? Okay. Um, also, good question. I, uh, I don't believe in hand sanitizers and all these uh, products. The best way to protect yourself is wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Wash your hands with soap, sanitizing soap, regular soap. You can use dull soap or dill or anything what you have available and the hand washing for 15 uh, 20 seconds it's good enough if you don't have soap with you and it happens your child dirty your hands just running water you just can pour the water on your hand like a water bottle right? water bottle and so uh, i would not advise to use just baby wipes it's not enough uh, to sanitize okay the hand washing try to avoid touching your face and uh, I would advise to drink a lot of hot fluid because they said that this virus is uh, temperature sensitive. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the cup of hot tea will prevent from okay. coronavirus. Well, that's news to me. That's amazing information. Thank you so much. Um, so my next question to you is, if a child is cared for by an elderly relative, a grandparent, or even childcare providers who are fall in the high risk category, would you advise families to really do their best right now, starting now to isolate kids and other members from uh, high-risk um, relatives? And uh, yes, it's a good question. So I would advise to uh, try to find some different uh, care provider because unfortunately we don't know how this virus is uh, spreading and as we notice that uh, it can be unnoticed in younger people and can be very serious with with older people. So if you have children who showed a little bit cold symptoms, it's better to uh, try to find some different mm -hmm. care, uh, care provider and uh, protect your elderly uh, relatives. Okay, thank you so much. One of my other questions for you is pertaining, um, let's say you are sick, maybe it's just a flu, but um, what are effective measures to stop the spread of an illness? Are masks effective? Uh, so if you are healthy and you want to protect yourself, uh, the mask is not so effective. Uh, if you, uh, the regular mask we're talking about. Like the paper one, right? Yeah, paper one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have those masks and you want to wear them, you can wear them, but it's not very good protection. And don't forget to change them every two hours. Uh, if you want, really want to uh, help uh, from spreading, uh, there is a special mask which we call like TB masks. This is mm -hmm. what you have to wear. TB, like for tuberculosis. For tuberculosis, yes. Has to TB, yeah. yeah. This is the mask you can wear, and it's uh, somehow will uh, help spreading them. Will it help the, from the virus getting in, or just from the virus getting out? If you uh, are in and out, sick. this is because okay. it's a uh, special mask. Okay, and it okay. should. It's a special technique, putting them on and taking them off. Uh, as a doctor, we have special training for it. 
So I don't know how effective it will be for uh, general population. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for healthy person to protect, it's not so effective. Uh, but sick person who may be carrying coronavirus has to wear a mask because it prevents from spreading. So as a protection, no, but to prevent spreading, yes. Um, Dr. Um, do you have any idea, somebody asked if, what is, a, uh, basically when a person is quarantined, does it mean they have to stay within the bounds of their house or can they still go walk their dog and, you know, just, you know, wearing the mask? Uh, actually, mean? quarantine it means they should have to stay in the home okay. for two weeks, fortunately. Okay, understood. <laughs> they can open the windows and everything, but they have to stay in the yeah, home. Somebody mentioned that isolation means staying in, quarantine means you just have to walk, but not in populated No, areas. no, no. Quarantine means you have to stay in the, in the house. So Thank, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Isolation can be in the in the room, but quarantine you have to be in uh, okay. in your house. Interesting okay. for two weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, a lot of parents are also asking: uh, Is it safe to bring their child to a park, to a swimming pool, to outdoor spaces, uh, or should they err on the side of caution and just keep them at home when not in school? Um, if the schools are open, if the parks are open, if the swimming pools are open and they're not quarantined, you can take your child if your child is absolutely healthy. Mm -hmm. If child shows any symptoms of cold or any kind of uh, dizziness, uh, uh, I mean uh, disease, it's better to stay home, of course. But if the child is healthy and uh, school is not quarantined or a uh, swimming pool is not quarantined, it's, I think it's safe to go. Uh, and some parents mentioning that it's helpful to change clothes as soon as you get back home from outdoors. Um. It's always helpful. It's okay. always helpful, not because of coronavirus, but uh, when you come home, it's good to change your clothes, wash your hands, and, uh, you know, uh, have a cup of hot tea. Hot okay. tea. I think hot tea will good. solve a lot yeah. of problems and help with some anxiety. If people yes, are anxiety. And when you drink tea, you know, you can have, uh, first of all, you hydrate yourself. And the hydration means a lot, uh, preventing from tra trans uh, transferring this uh, viral infection. Mm -hmm. Also, sometimes I advise to put some in drops in the nose because it washes out the virus out of your uh, airways. Mm -hmm. So it's good. The prevention also. Just regular saline? Just regular saline water. You just can drop in the child's nose or your nose and it will just be, just mechanically flushes out of the viruses. Okay. Understood. Um, Dr. Thanks. Zian, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to meet with me and to answer questions. Um, what are your final words for the families? Um, I would advise, first of all, do not panic. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your life. Uh, just use all the precautions we were talking about. Uh, just follow the, all the instructions uh, from your uh, doctors and pediatricians. Um, and if anything will change and we'll get new news or uh, any updates from CDC, we will let you know. Yeah. But right now, just be happy and we don't will panic. We will definitely be in touch with Dr. Mzia. We will provide updates uh, as they unfold and you'll be first to know any new information. So be safe and um, bye. Thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. And if you have questions for any of our experts, we want to know, leave a comment or send us an email. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.